you a bunch of Scooby Doo dick microwave pancake eating soy sauce and cornbread loving motherfuckers. Welcome back to the show. Gotta catch my breath and walk up the stairs. Uh, shake. Uh, well, I don't know why I'm calling you names because uh, actually today I'm very excited to finally get to do some things I actually want to do. And it's a beautiful day. It's a little nippy, but it's sunny and nice. Uh, today's framing day. I'm gonna do some framing. I gotta build a bulkhead or a structural beam for across there. I'm gonna vault these ceilings and frame out for the fireplace. So I'm pretty excited. I'm gonna be doing that. It's a combination of brains and brawn, which is pretty much what I am. I know I mentioned a lot of times in the last the electrical episode that I am not qualified to do electrical, so you shouldn't be taking advice from me. So, but if you do it, you want to do it. Uh, when making vaulted ceilings and building bulkheads and removing framing, that sort of stuff, you want to take some drawings. Make some drawings, send them to a structural engineer to get approved. I'm not going to do any of that shit. Um, <laughs> so again, you can... Uh, I would highly suggest you do all this stuff unless you're qualified to do it. I would call myself qualified to do it. I've done a lot of framing in my day. I'm pretty big deal. Uh, yeah, I was actually a structural as uh, structures in the Air Force. I have uh, six years of quality government training, so it should do me just fine on this deal. Uh, typically, what I do is actually there are things you can look up. There are uh, um, building codes and yada yada blah blah blah. I live in the great state of Ohio. Uh, not only is everybody about ten percent bigger here than the rest of the globe, um, but they also get a lot of uh, what we call tornadoes. I lived in England for a while, and they're always like, Oh, the weather here is so bad. It's so, so rainy. Our weather will fucking kill you. You understand? It will suck you up in the air and blast you uh, three counties away. So, uh, yeah, but since we have a large amount of tornadoes, I want this uh, to be tight, strong. Also, I hear a lot of generational nonsense about how things were built good back in the day. Um, maybe, yeah, some degree. We'll give you that. Um, but I will say also there's a lot of uh, suspect framing in this house. I'm not really sure. It's, it was built in 1914 and it has survived many a great tornado. Um, not really sure how. That's not a properly installed header. Also not a properly installed header. As far as the sill plate goes, everything just sort of seems to be kind of pickledy pickledy placed together. Um, so anything I'm going to do is actually I think going to make it stronger really. A lot of these horizontals, they're just resting on that, I put header in quotations because that's not a proper header either, and they're just sort of resting there. There's not really a lot of horizontal holding of the roof together. Before I make my support beam, I just want to briefly show you a little bit more about framing. Uh, not a single door up here is framed correctly. I like these old craftsmen home, and uh, I like that people back in the day had the balls to just order a house and build it themselves. Um, a lot of them build really nicely, some of them uh, again a little suspect, um, but again I'm going to show you a couple little things about framing here. Like you guys saw the way that door was in before, where the other door headers are. On a load bearing wall, you have studs typically 16 inches on center, which this is not, but that's fine, it's more than. And then you'll have at a doorway, there's your common stud. Should knock these nails down. You have your common stud, and then you'd have one. You'd have your, that this this would be your jack, or known as a trim stud, and then it'd be two two by fours over top the header, right? Right? Confused yet? And then this stays here. I'm just moving it because I only have two hands. Above it would be known as your cripple studs. So that way this header, this support header, two usually laminated with a piece of half inch in between because of the... A 2 by 4 is not 2 by 4 This is the worst framing class ever. But a 2 by 4 is not a perfect two inches or so you got to need something to make up that other half inch so 
Just imagine a piece of half inch between these two as your header. So you have your header over a door, another full length stud all the way to the sill plate. That's the stud that goes horizontal along the ground, the sill. And then that guy sits there on both sides. Imagine like that on either side of the jam. That gives you downward, any downward pressure can rest up on there. Because a lot of times in tornado country, they're like, uh, if your house is shaking, stand in a doorway, which is all well and good if your house is framed correctly. Uh, if it's like these guys, uh, that's actually probably one of the weaker places you could stand. So don't stand there. So I got these big ass two by tens. Um, these are going to work as my structural beam. Uh, I ripped some half inch, like I said. When added together, it doesn't match the width. So I ripped down some plywood. I'm going to laminate them together. Uh, one thing about it, usually I pick out a stud, I like it to be nice and straight. But this, you want a slight concave upward. So that way, when you press it up at the side, that support is pushing up a little bit in the middle. Um, you can look online. Again, I wouldn't tackle this project if you're a novice. <laughs> but they have framing guidelines for structural support beams and all that. Okay, so like I said, I picked these out because one, they have a slight bow. So to make sure I have the same, I want the bow on top on both of them. So I mark an arrow upwards. Measure twice. All right, a structural beam is not a time to get economical with your glue, right? Uh, you want to use as much of this. You want to make basically a laminated beam. Um, also, I like PL. I used to be a liquid nail man myself, and uh, anybody can correct me on this if they want to. Uh, but I used to do a lot of work, handyman stuff, construction stuff, uh, in the Maryland area. Use liquid nail all the time. Went to England, used liquid nail over there. Came back and I felt like the liquid nail was different. Somebody told me they got more environmentally friendly, which I usually typically support. I don't know if this is true or not, but like they removed some chemicals. My personal opinion is if you're making a product that is shit and it's not going to, it's going to create a lot of waste, that is not good for the environment, but that's just my opinion. So anyway, I don't really like liquid nail that much. I use a lot of PL. Get liberal with it. Get you an official Luke Capasso commemorative smear stick. This is definitely professional. Just like you're growing a a boat. Basically, wash, rinse, and repeat. down this dude you want to make sure your top section is flush because the boards aren't perfect any place where it's not tight as can be don't be afraid to grab a C clamp and give it the business if you start seeing that glue squeeze up out of there like that uh, you know you're winning.
While well, I let my beam dry, I'm going to go ahead and start making collar ties. What collar ties do is uh, they hold the roof rafters together. Yeah, your roof rafters, like so, they're going to want to pull out. You got the weight of the roof like this. So what a collar tie does, this guy, It's going to go politely, very kindly, right between there, and I'm going to go every three foot, either side of the joist, with a carriage bolt going straight through it. And use this as a guide, level it out, just so you can see my face, level it out. and then mark it. That'll be the angle for this side, and that's the angle for that side. All right, this is my first collar tie. Notice the sleek design, the nice angle so it'll meet the pitch of the roof perfectly. These guys will lay up in here, slide up on either side of the rafter, and then I just run a through bolt through each one. Kind of the way it scissors the joists, what you have is these carriage bolts are going to go through both the, the new collar ties and the old joists, right? And that keeps you from getting this number. Huh? Now that I got my collar ties installed, I can begin taking out the uh, the joists. This horizontal joist right here, um, if you'll notice, it's just connected with a at a kind of just butts into this cross beam here, but over here, it sits on top of that top plate right into the roof above. So. I'm just going to I'm just cutting them clean here. Otherwise, if I cut it and try to pry down on it, it could this end could go upwards and damage my roof, which is not good. This is fun. This area I sealed up. This one uh, joist I'm taking down now, just laying across the 2x4, was that much batshit. Mmm. Yummy. Throughout the series, I've shown a lot of videos of myself just cleaning up, sweeping, uh, tidying up the place. Uh, I know it seems unnecessary, but I will probably have the broom in my hand more than any other tool on this job, uh, aside from my big fat cock. <laughs> um, but really, uh, a clean workspace is a safe workspace that keeps you from losing tools, losing materials, wasting time. I have a difficult time hiring people. Uh, it took me a long time to break my son into this. Because people think when you, they're like, oh, I'd like to work with you. And I'm like, yeah, we can work together. Um, but you're going to have to just clean up most of the day. And they think it's beneath them and I'm wasting their time. And then they do a shit job of it. If you can't use a broom properly you know, and you don't know the difference between clean and dirty, what makes you think I'm going to hand you a power tool or some... $18 a square foot piece of tile to practice on. I spent almost the first two years of working just cleaning up shit after old men. I'm sa cleaning and uh, saving and reusing these studs. Um, not just because I'm a cheap, miserly piece of shit. Uh, I am, uh, no doubt. But 
Um, these are old growth pine studs, right? These are old growth pine two by fours. And this is the industry standard now, which is southern white pine. White pine. Um, but really, I just want you to even just look at the end grain patterns, the tightness of these grains compared to the new growth pine. It's not just a color difference. These are both from the same tree. But this same 2 by this 2x4, which is smaller than, this is hard to demonstrate on video. But this is heavy. Like this probably, this feels like three times to four times heavier than this. I just want you, I don't know if I can demonstrate this right. You hear that? Almost hollow. This was the industry standard up till about 1910-ish. It's called old growth pine um, because it doesn't exist anymore. Old growth pine was pine that was 200 years old or more and it became real dense and uh, like you walk into old buildings with these pine floors and they almost have like a reddish tint to it. That's old growth pine heartwood. Um, sad. We over farmed it. The white man. Um, yeah, Americans, we ever farmed it in North America, and now it doesn't exist anymore. So most of the pine you get is about 50, 60 years old. Um, so yeah, this is some of these just amazing, right? It's much like me, really. Um, a lot of the men you see nowadays are like new growth pine. It looks similar. It can be about the same size and dimensions, but it's just light. Like my cock, that's old country old growth cop. Young boys, they can just pop out white pine all day long, but it don't have the time makes the thickness, the density of this, the girth. You know the difference when it's in your hand, the strength. I mean, you can see it in a woman's face the first time she gets a hold of that old growth and she's like, oh my. That is a substantial difference. And you can see it all over her body. I'm like, yeah, that's some old growth Kentucky home cooking that you ain't used to. Not this new growth Chipotle soft ass wood. That's what I am, just some old country, old growth cock. I mean, it gets heavy sometimes, so I just feel like I gotta sit it down on something sometimes, just give me some lower back problems. But it's a shame. That's not what's on the market these days. Shame for y'all. They just ain't pumping out that girthy shit like they used to make. Can you make more dick jokes based on caulking and wood and compare it to your cock as much as possible? A comment made by no one, but it's this kind of high powered content that's going to send this channel through the stratosphere. Well folks, that's about all I got for today. Um, I was going to just do one framing video, but I decided instead I'll cut it up because it's probably going to be three days of framing in this room, if not more. Um, but this room's going to be motherfucking massive. I haven't even taken the wall out yet. Um, but yeah, pretty happy with the progress so far. Um, it's 11 2 is the height. I could put regulation basketball hoop in here. Um, but yeah, that's it for me today. Uh, hopefully get back at it tomorrow or the next day. Um, whatever. I don't know. Hope this is good enough for you. Bruh.
This is old country, real deal, thick, deep in the mountain pine. Heartwood from the center, the densest grain, gonna blow your brain, and you ain't ever gonna be the same. That's how that is.